Hello and welcome back to Pain to Passion Live, my friends. I am so excited because today I get to talk to my new friend, Becca. She is so amazing and I can't wait to have this conversation with her and for you guys to hear from her today as well. Um, We met actually in Denver and when was that? June? June. June in June. And I'll share a little bit of that story because it's kind of funny, but I wanted to let you say hello, Becca, let everyone hear your voice. Thanks for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. It's such an honor to be here with you and absolutely love the way in which we did connect. Yes. It's great to be here. Yes, it is cool. I mean, to me, I'm like, it's just a God thing, you know, (laughs) It is is. because it couldn't really be more random. Have we met? We, well, we both went to the same event, um, Embrace Your Ambition in Denver, which was super cool. I had a friend who invited me to stay with her and she was basically like, so there's this girl, Becca, who's flying in really late tonight and (laughs) she'll just probably pop in and sleep in the same bed as you, like in the middle of the night. Are you cool with that? And I was like, sure. (laughs) Why not? (laughs) And she didn't really know you either but you had gotten connected. So like we told the front desk that you were coming and they're like, okay, if she has an ID, we'll just give her a key. (laughs) So I'm like fast asleep. We, I met Becca when I was fast asleep, if that's possible. I jumped in bed with a stranger that I did not know, but I knew we were going to the same conference with good people. So I trusted that you were a good person and myself next to you. (laughs) Try to stick together sad in case you in case you needed your space to sleep, but that is how we first met. Honestly, I was just worried that you were going to be safe, like get there safely because you were traveling so late at night. So I was relieved when I was like, okay, she's here. Okay, I can go back to sleep. (laughs) But yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, but I'm so grateful that we got to meet each other and, um, I'm really glad that we get to have this conversation today because you have some pretty amazing stories, but I would love for you to just introduce yourself to our audience, kind of tell us who you are and what you're about. So go for it. So what's going on guys? My name is Becca Boston. I am not from Boston. I was originally born and raised outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I'm now here in uh, Portland, Oregon. Uh, First and foremost, I'm a big extroverted, heart-loving individual, and I am a sister, a parent, or not a parent. Whoa. (laughs) 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 Is what I meant to say. Um, Because family is first for me. Outside of that, I am a full-time caregiver for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, as well as a content creator, primarily on TikTok, and an entrepreneur, Um, with my motto being stay strong, stay you, helping people recognize that their strength is giving their pain a voice while staying true and authentic to who they are. So it's a little bit about me. Boom. That was awesome. So you're like really bored and you don't have anything going on. (laughs) Anything going on. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, she has a full plate. You're doing a lot, which is not a surprise. Um, I love how you said you're introverted with a big heart. That's definitely I'm introverted. You totally said extroverted. And that's what I meant to say. Okay. Extroverted with a big heart, because that's definitely true. And that comes through in all your content as well. Um, but kind of just want to get to know you yeah. a little bit better. And I know you have a lot of stories and part of your bio was talking about how you believe that people's stories are just so powerful, right? It's not exactly how you put it, but you believe in people's stories and how sharing who you are and what you've been through really has a lot of power. So what kind of has made you the Becca that you are today? What is, what is something really transformational um, that has happened in your life? Like, I know you have a lot of stories, but I kind of like to just hear what's on your heart today to share? Yeah, I think for me, one of the biggest things that has been transformational and the biggest year that I made the most change is ironically 2020. 
You know, mm -hmm. even before the pandemic, it was a commitment to myself to show up for myself and create a greater version of myself. And I did not see the pandemic coming. Nobody saw this pandemic coming. However, I knew I made this commitment to myself and I decided to invest into myself to no longer, you know, fit in with people that weren't accepting or loving of me and mm -hmm. no longer wanting to change who I was to please other people. I really wanted to, you know, rediscover and reinvent myself. So I really continued to remain consistent with on in my fitness journey. I dove into personal development programs and really put in what I call that worth work. And mm -hmm. for me, that was really, you know, digging deep at the things that I needed to let go of. I really needed to let go of some of the trauma that I'd been through. I'd been a, in a domestic violence relationship for years um, that, I wasn't speaking up about. Um, so a lot of just a lot of work within that. And through that, I began to recognize um, that I had a story and I had a purpose. And it was actually Trent Shelton who told me, you are purpose. It's a placement within this world that you're looking to find. Mm -hmm. And through that, as I continued on, you know, being on TikTok and all of that, people resonating and relating to my story um, I began to recognize that I, I do have something here and I can make a difference. I just have to continuously show up. So um, that's kind of how I got on my entrepreneur or social media influencer route. Wow. That is so amazing. I think for a lot of people, 2020 was transformational <laughs> or a big shift in their lives. Um, not necessarily before the pandemic, like it was for you. It started before that, but I think for those of us who have been willing and open, the last two years have been pretty big as far as our personal growth, right? But what was it that like, what was it before and after that push, that thing that really just pushed you to be like, okay, I'm done living the way that I'm living and I'm going to put the work in. Because I think we all get to that pivot point and some people are able to go for it and say yes. And some people don't. So what was it for you? I think it was the New Year's Eve. I went out and I, you know, went to party with some friends, friends. Um, and I really recognized at that time that these weren't people who really knew me mm -hmm. um, and people that I didn't necessarily want to be around. And I woke up, you know. January 1st of 2020. And I walked into the gym feeling ashamed for, you know, hanging around people that I didn't necessarily want to be around the choices that I made the night before. And I had a sit down with my trainer and said, I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of changing who I am for other people. I'm sick and tired of not being able to look at myself in the mirror and be happy with who I am. And that is my commitment to myself. And it's not an easy commitment to, you know, show up for yourself and put in that worth work, especially when curveballs such as the pandemic come along. But when your why is strong enough, you continuously find ways to show up. And I had to recognize that when the pandemic hit, you know, one of the biggest things I lost was the gym and the community of the gym. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was still an essential healthcare worker as a care coordinator for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So I was still going through my everyday life, but I didn't have my outlet of the gym. So how mm -hmm. did I have to adjust is allowing the world to become my gym and continue to find ways for me to, you know, get my stress out and find ways in which I could start giving my pain a voice and start, you know, telling people that I wasn't doing okay when I wasn't doing okay. So um, I think, I think that would, yeah, 2020. Yeah. <laughs> It was hard of it at the end of the year when everybody was saying, if all you did was make it through the year, I'm proud of you. And I generally am proud of everybody who made it through 2020. Like it was not a freaking easy year. And if all you did is make it through. But for me, it was really hard to be like 2020 was my greatest year mm -hmm. of going in work for myself. And it was really hard to be like, I had a great year when everybody else, was like, <laughs> I, I just made it. And I'm like, I understand. Like, I'm not, I'm not putting you down in any way, shape or form, but it was, yeah. a, it was an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. Well, I say kudos to you. Thank I you. think there were some people who rose to the occasion. 
you know, and you were definitely one of those people. And regardless, like I said earlier, I think when we look back, all of us can look at 2020 as like, we kind of had to grow, right? Right. Some of us just chose to really press in and you were one of those people. Um, You mentioned that you talked to your trainer that day on January 1st, and I'm sure accountability and having people around you really helped keep that spark going because a lot of people make a choice to change on January 1st, right? But not everyone sticks with it. But here you are almost three years later, Mm -hmm. still sticking with it. So was it community? What else did you have in your life that helped you stick with it and keep growing? I think for me personally, yes, it came down to community and having individuals who, and I think this is something for a lot of people is often we see the light of somebody before they can even recognize it. Mm -hmm. And my really good friend told me that he saw the light within me um, even before the rest of the world began to see it. And, you know, I think being surrounded by people who see your lights and see your potential can help you stay committed and also help you learn along the way. Mm -hmm. Um, So I would definitely say, the people that I was surrounded by um, and the way in which they chose to show up for me as well. Um, Mm -hmm. It was very mutual um, and just supporting each other to get through. So community is huge for me. Yeah. And that mutual aspect is important, right? Right. You can't really be in community if you're not offering the same kind of community yourself. Exactly. So I love that you pointed that out, that it was mutual. Um, Cause you can't just expect people to be feeding you all the time. You, there are seasons of course of weakness and hardship when you really need people to help, help you stay strong. But regardless, there needs to be a mutuality and relationships. And I, I just love that. Um, and I know you mentioned earlier too, like that you kind of hit, hit it off on TikTok. Um, <laughs> But your TikTok's really fun. I was I was looking at it today. <laughs> and did that all start in 2020 as well? And kind of like what did that do for you when you were like, wow, so many people are resonating with my story? Yes. So like you said, I've been on TikTok for two years now. Um mm-hmm. and one thing that I, I I often say that because some people assume that just 23.7k just popped up like no (laughs) this has been two years of me on this journey and I never expected to be where I am today and you know I did have some videos that went viral I will say going viral is not what you expect yes it is fun but the toll that it takes on your mental health is Mm. actually quite challenging um but when I began to recognize I remember really wanting to get to that thousand follower mark because once you gain a thousand followers you can start going live and when I started going live and having conversations with people not only was I helping them I was also helping myself and I think that's something so often that we can do is by helping somebody else you're also helping yourself or healing yourself in ways that you may not understand Um, and just connecting with those people but one of the big things for me was recognizing that you know, in 2017, I thought about throwing the towel to my life and Mm. thankfully God threw the towel back at me and said, your life isn't over and kept me here. Right. And that video that popped up on my phone was a video of Trent Shelton saying your life isn't over. And the moment that it really hit me was when I recognized that my videos were doing the same thing for other people. Wow. Um, That really hit home for me. And allowed me to recognize that I wasn't just here for the following that I had. I was here for the one person that needed my message. And that's something that I live by is the one person impact mentality. I don't think that the numbers within your following are all that important. It's really who you are and how you show up to take care of your community. So I am that person that will message people or, you know, communicate in the comments. And I think that's really, really important is to take care of your following and those that um, are also supporting you within your own journey. So yeah, it's definitely been a game changer. Yeah. That's, that's so cool to hear. And I was actually reading like, cause you did like a Q and a, 
I think yesterday, it was yesterday or today. And I was reading your answers. <laughs> I was totally stalking you today. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I was reading your answers. And one of the answers that you, you did mention about um, cultivating the relationships with your followers and how doing that has been such an important part of your growth for sure, but also having genuine, authentic relationships with yeah. people, which is cool because not not all influencers are doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, but the ones who are, like you can tell that there's a genuine warmth to their heart, that they actually care about the people. And like you said, if it changes one person's life, like that is so worth it. Mm-hmm. And we can all every single person can impact one person's life. Exactly. Right. You don't have to even have social media. You just have to have a neighbor or a kid or a friend or a spouse. So for you, like what's the number one thing that you say you feel is important in a relationship with other people? I think honesty and showing up truly and authentic Mm -hmm. to who you are. You know, I, I think And I've done this throughout my life as well, but I think it's so easy to show up and say, or put on this mask of, you know, I'm fine or, you know, I'm good when I'm really breaking inside. And, you know, I think so often, you know, I hear people say I'm fine. And in my book, fine stands for effed up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. There's something going on behind the scenes that you're not sharing. And I think when you can recognize that vulnerability is a strength, you are able to bring down this weight that you're carrying around and allow yourself to be free. Because if you are changing who you are to become somebody else, you have to recognize that there's still going to be people that hate you or don't like you as you're changing yourself. Why not be your true and authentic self and love that and understand that there's still going to be people that don't like you. But if you continuously live to please other people, you're never going to be happy with who you are. Mm -hmm. so I think I'm huge on like authenticity and just showing up as you yeah yeah which you do so well by the way (laughs) (laughs) I mean you you never come across as fake you know or put on you're not like performing you're just being yourself um but a long time to get there here yeah which is what I was gonna ask you don't just arrive at authenticity usually (laughs) right Um, so what has that journey to authenticity been like, because you mentioned so many different things that you've been up against, right. Um, but I would love to hear a little bit more about your journey to being able to be authentic. Yeah. I think part of my journey is, you know, I grew up as a tomboy. I grew up rocking sports jerseys, playing all the sports. And when I look back at like my seven-year-old self, like I was confident and happy in who I was. Mm -hmm. And as, you know, as we all grow up and, you know, experience new things, we get in those middle school, high school ages, we begin to change. Mm -hmm. And so often I feel like we change to fit society's norms. So for me, I was changing myself as a woman of who I was to kind of fit in the mold of what society claims is beautiful. And within doing that, I lost my tomboy self. Sure, Mm. it came here and there and whatnot, but I didn't even feel confident in that because I was had this like expectation then within my own self that I had to show up in X amount of ways and was throwing on the makeup and the sexy outfits just to fit in and you know putting in the worth work into myself. I recognized that seven year old Becca again. And so Mm -hmm. often that's something I have people do is like reflect on who you were at seven, six years old, the things that you love, the things you were wearing, and were you truly happy and confident in that individual? And if so, like dive back into those things because like that is still a part of you and you can still recreate that. So for me, it was you know, being confident and comfortable showing up in my real raw authentic self. And that is often me showing up in t-shirts and a backwards hat and, you know, things that make me happy. I think confidence is like an outfit you wear within yourself, right? It's Mm -hmm. not your physical clothes. Like I could be having a bum day and maybe I don't look like I'd have confidence, but I have confidence because I'm rocking it within my mind and my heart and my soul. Yeah. 
Um, so it's taken me a long time to get there. And then I think often when you step into your authenticity or even a difficult challenge, you're then challenged with, is this the right thing to do? So as I've stepped out into this, I still have had people, you know, say to me, oh, you won't be seen or you won't be successful if you don't fit society's norms of being beautiful. And it's a good thing I'm not trying to look at to fit into society expectations. You know, I think it's the people that decide I'm no longer going to be a part of society's expectations that truly start making a difference. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've really had to accept that. And as hard as it is at times to, you know, recently I posted a TikTok of me crying and sharing a message of how I was hurt um, due to, you know, some other females, you know, actions towards me. Um, but the love that came back for me, yet also the people that needed to hear that message. Yeah. Was the reminder of why I speak up when it's hard, when people have hurt me, because I know that I'm not alone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I love what you were saying about the seven-year-old version of yourself I have a seven-year-old daughter <laughs> a girl is confident beyond confident yeah. and I so do not want her to lose that because she's so quirky and <laughs> she's yes. just like I love seeing her sparkle and shine and um I do think it's so simple right but it's so powerful to think back what are those things that made me feel alive what are those things that really filled me with joy yes. what made me smile when I put it on like I made a list of those things when I was probably about 20 in my 20s I'm in my 30s now <laughs> 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 but because I was like I don't even know who I am right now like right. I literally cannot even remember who I am I have tried so hard to fit into everyone else's mold, what they want from me to show up in a way that they're expecting me to just so that I can get by, like, what's the point, right? right? So I'm like, I like start writing this list of things and it can be the simple things. Like I love high top shoes. Okay. Put it on the list. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> Those kinds of things, because when you start embracing really that person that God created you to be. You're uniquely yourself for a reason. Exactly. And you're supposed to have joy in that because that who that's who God has made you to be, right? You a unique fingerprint for a reason. And now it's your job to go out and make an imprint within this world. Yes. Boom. So powerful. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. But also, can we talk about this TikTok where you're crying? Because I was like so mad. <laughs> at these women sorry god I was really mad <laughs> because like when are we going to stop acting like seventh graders thank you you know it was such a mean girls moment when like you are all grown women middle school was a long time ago and basically a long story short for those of you listening Becca was going to this event and what the lady was like, just dress up and make sure your makeup's on point, which is like, <laughs> that would really make me angry if I got that message. <laughs> um, for me, it was like, I understood where they were coming from, right? Like, okay, you're a woman that walk, rocks makeup and you want to put on a beautiful outfit. I get that a hundred percent. Like I, I don't knock anybody who does that. Like if that's for you, that's, right. for you. that's not for me. And I made it known like, Hey, that's not my style. However, I'm still willing to dress up in an outfit that I feel confident in mm -hmm. your events in which yeah. they invited me in. So, yeah. So no. <laughs> And, and I think the important thing to like recognize here is like, it's just a reflection of them, right? It's mm -hmm. nothing I did. I, if anything, I spoke up, I held my boundary. Totally. And at the end of the day, like if they don't respect your boundaries, then they're clearly not for you. And you right. can't allow people who like, even though it's hard, even though, yes, I was hurt, this wasn't the first time that it's happened. And I was able to move on quicker from it because mm -hmm. of that. Yet, Having that recognition, 
sure, that's a word. <laughs> <laughs> that it's a reflection of them. And, mm-hmm. you know, that your beauty is really defined by your heart and your character. And if people are tearing you down based on the way that you look or the way that they think beauty, beauty is, it's a reflection of them. And there's no amount of makeup that can cover up a negative or hurtful heart and character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely true. So I love how you're saying like, yes, it affected you. Yes, it hurt you. Growth comes through pain, yeah. period. Every kind of growth, yep. physical strength, mental strength, emotional strength. There's always pain involved. But in the past, those kinds of things affected you for longer, more deeply. Maybe you tried to actually fit in in the beginning of your journey. You probably just were like, okay, <laughs> I'll do what you say. Right. right. But here you've been on this journey, which again speaks of your consistency, your tenacity, your willingness, um, which I just absolutely love that. So kudos everyone out there who's on a personal development and growth journey, like keep going. It does get easier. It does. And I think that's the other really important thing to like share with like people who are like are just starting out is don't compare your starting point to somebody who's 10 years in. Yeah. Everybody's journey and everybody's timeline is different. Right. And we, none of us were handed a manual to life. We are Mm -hmm. all trying to work together to support one another and somehow, some way, create a survival guide. And as us coming together, we can do that. Um, But I think so often the timelines of people's journeys aren't really shared. So if you're on day one, like huge props to you because Mm -hmm. it is hard to show up for you and it does take consistency. It does take, you know, discipline. But at the end of the day, when you continue to show up for you and your why is greater than anything you can imagine you'll find ways to show up and like you said there is pain through or lessons through pain and it is those painful moments where you know I say you can you can choose to remain the same or you can choose to grow like Mm -hmm. when I stepped out of my domestic violence relationship I recognized I had a hard to choose what was that hard the hard was choosing to remain in the same situation and accepting the part that I was playing because I had to take my own you know, accountability within the relationship that I was playing, or do I want to choose the hard of stepping out of that relationship and just try to figure out what this freaking road of recovery is going to look like. Either way, it's going to be hard. Either way, it's not going to be easy, but you have to choose what your heart is going to be. Yes. Choose your heart. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, What role has faith played in your journey? Yeah, that's a great question. So I grew up Presbyterian and um, always grew up going to the church. Um, My family was very active within the church. And while going through my domestic violence relationship, I really kind of, I wouldn't say I fully lost it. Um, I was a big supporter of the basketball player, Kyle Korver. Um, He was a man of faith and he shopped at my mom's bookstore. And I was able to kind of find some of the music that he liked. Um, So I think through him, I was able to find some of the music that I liked that continued to allow me to have that mustard seed of faith. Um, But through recovery, I just kind of put my faith on the back burner as I was just trying to survive, you know, Mm -hmm. I was trying to get by. And eventually when I did commit to, you know, 2020 making my self a greater version, I also recognized that faith was a part of this. Um, And it's been a long journey for me. I think, you know, I've really had to recognize for me, like my faith journey is very personalized between me and God and the way I show up to pray might not look like, you know, what society expects people to pray. Or like, for me, it's, you know, just having a conversation with my homie, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's very like, free will and that's what I love about my relationship with God um but it's been a long journey and you know I was very blessed to connect with Marcus Black and I will never forget messaging him and saying I'm struggling in my faith journey can you help me out and as the man that he is welcomed to me with an 
big open heart and helped me along the way. And I, I did tell him, I said, you know, as I commit to this journey someday in the future, because I wanted to make sure I was committed to this, like, I want to get rebaptized. Mm. And, and little did we know that it was going to be at the EYA conference. So that's amazing. I love that. And you're right. I think true faith that's authentic is very personalized. You, you can't have the same journey as anybody else. Mm-hmm. And you can't even have, God's not even going to have the same kind of conversation with you as he is with me <laughs> or anybody else. We um, can deliver in different ways. You know, I have somebody who it, it sounds crazy, but it works for them is they don't necessarily believe in God, but they believe in a higher power. And something that came across in a moment of need was a squirrel. So now squirrels to them are their version of a higher power, right? Aww. So, <laughs> I always say to people like, it doesn't necessarily have to be God if that's what you don't believe. But if you believe in something that's a higher power of that, like what is that one thing that you connect with? Maybe that's nature. Maybe that's, you know, art or whatever it may be, but find that one thing that like you can connect with. Mm -hmm. I mean, God can't be put in a box, right? Right. (laughs) Right. You can't predict him any more than you can predict any person so multifaceted. So I really love that. And I'm sure that journey of like realizing that you don't always approach the world the same as a lot of the people around you started when you were young, because you've mentioned like you're learning disabilities and those struggles that you had. Can you talk about that a little bit too? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So at a very young age, I was diagnosed with dyslexia and auditory processing disorder. Um, and I was very blessed to be diagnosed at a very young age. I was Mm. diagnosed during a time in which not a lot of people were being diagnosed. There was not a lot of information out about dyslexia or an auditory processing disorder. So when actually I got diagnosed, my mom went to my, um, public elementary school to, you know, share the news and advocate for me. My mom had more information than my school did. Yeah. So, uh, my mom, my family has been my biggest support system. Um, I went to two different schools for kids with learning disabilities. I eventually transferred back to my public high school as I recognized that going from a school that specialized in teaching kids with learning differences, I was getting the constant support that I needed and going from that straight into college where they're not mm. really required to follow an IEP, right. I needed a transition period. So 11, 11th to 12th grade, I did head back to my um, public high school and graduated from there. Um, but it's something I'm passionate about. You know, I I don't see my learning disability as a disability. I often say it, it's a learning difference. Mm -hmm. Um, And I truly believe that dyslexia is my superpower um, as it has taught me like freaking incredible life lessons that I wouldn't have learned otherwise. Yeah. Um, So it's definitely something that I'm very passionate about, but to bring it back to faith, like my mom, actually, we were having this conversation the other day of, you know, I never really expected you to be where you are within your faith today. And she prayed and prayed and prayed that, you know, I would find my relationship with my higher power, but she knew that reading the Bible for me was challenging. She knew, you know, the struggles that I faced by being, you know, my Bible study teacher and the ways that she was, you know, playing a part in my life. And she just continuously prayed about it. She was like, I knew eventually you would find your way. Mm -hmm. I was just hoping that it would be one day. And you know, I'm still somebody, I I do my best to dive into my Bible every day, but for me, it's often through like devotionals and things like that, but it's just finding what works for you, um, Mm -hmm. within reading, within learning, because we're all students within life, and I think that's something that I had to, took a long time to recognize that, Mm -hmm. like, life is a classroom, and you have to be willing to be the student, and that sometimes, you know, you got to be the teacher. Yeah. So, so good. I I actually got like chills (laughs) hearing about your mom um, and her heart for you. Cause like I have two kids, you know, and I just love them and they both have their own challenges. And as a mom too, like there's a point at which you just have to surrender (laughs) and be like, okay, God, this is, this is in your hands, which is 
really good and wonderful, but for her to be able to have that conversation with you now and see where you are, like, I can just imagine her joy. Um, and your journey has taken twists and turns, but look at where you are today. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you really regret the challenges? No, I think, I think when it comes to regret, I think you have an option with regret. You can sit in that regret and feel even more regretful and beat yourself up about it or you can do something about it like Mm -hmm. you you can help people recognize that you don't want them to go through the same pain and the same you know situation that you didn't get to do or speak up about Mm -hmm. and that's kind of what for me stay strong stay you is about I didn't speak up and give my pain a voice when I was going through to my domestic violence and now to the day to be like my message is speak up and give your pain a voice because I didn't. And I, Mm -hmm. I want people to be able to get the help that they need. So they don't have to go through what I went through. Yeah. You have options with regret. Yeah. That's really powerful. Give your pain a voice. I think that can be taken into account in so many different situations. Um, but specifically for what you're talking about with domestic violence, I think it's really, really important and powerful that there are people like you who are saying, you need to do this because I know it's terrifying and you don't know what's going to happen on the other side. But um, what, like, what are some, some of the biggest wow moments that you've seen as you have given your pain of voice and seen that other people have followed your example and maybe made choices to speak up sooner than you did because of what you've shared? Yeah, I think, I think I've seen a lot of different things. And I think one of the big things that I'm big on is Mm -hmm. self-care. And one thing that I did throughout my journey is I had an addiction to self-injury. And one of the hard things about self-injury for those who don't know is you're harming your body. And unlike any other addiction, I'm not trying to put down how the struggle for alcoholics or um, you know narcotics anonymous are because they are very real, they are very challenging. However, what I recognized within my journey of being an addict to self harm was I didn't have to go to a drug dealer, I didn't have to go to the liquor store to go to my addiction. Mm-hmm. I was done with me, mm-hmm. and when you recognize that, it's like mind-blowing and how do you put down that type of addiction and throughout my journey I put together a self-care toolkit um and through that I've helped a lot of people who have come forward to give their pain a voice about harming themselves people that I knew for years and just weren't ready to admit it but having people show up and be like wow this is something that I can actually practically use and include within my life for when life gets triggering. You know, some people use it just because they deal with anxiety and when life gets triggering, they go to their self-care toolkit. So I think being able to recognize like there are things that have been in, that were challenging and hard for me to overcome within the moment. Like there were setbacks within my recovery. There were challenges. Recovery isn't linear, but at the end of the day, there's so much that I put into helping myself within my recovery that I can now take as tools and I can use to help somebody else. And we all have that within us. Like, how did Mm -hmm. you get from point A to point B? And Mm -hmm. what things did you use that can be used to help somebody else? Yeah, yeah. Again, it goes all the way back to what we were talking about at the beginning, like sharing your story, giving your pain a voice, whether it's during or after is so powerful because it really could give someone else the tool to get through the situation that they're in. So well done. (laughs) I absolutely love chatting with you. I think you're amazing. Um, And I would love for our listeners to be able to connect with you and like with anything that you have coming up, any opportunities to connect at all, let, let me know. Um, You can share those here and then I'll also put them in the show notes. So whatever Becca shares here, I'll also have in the show notes, guys. You can go check all out the links and everything, but yeah, go ahead and share with us how we can connect with you. 
Yeah. So I am on social media. Uh, it's Becca Boston 26 over on Instagram and Becca Boston six at TikTok. Um, and then one big thing that I have coming up is I am putting on a conference of myself, uh, called the celebrating purpose conference, and it's going to be helping people recognize that you are purpose and that it is this placement within this world that you're looking to discover and helping people turn their pain into their power. So if you guys want to join, it is February 25th in Houston, Texas, and you can go to BeccaBoston.net slash celebrating purpose to grab your tickets. Um, and we have incredible speakers lined up. We have Marcus Black, we have Ashley, we have Monica Macias, we have David Sledge. I just locked in Jay Pruna, who is a mind, my mindset coach as well as Trent Shelton's mindset coach. So we have an incredible lineup of speakers. Um, and I'm just so incredible, incredibly excited for everybody to come. So come hang out with us. That is so cool. Congratulations. Yeah. That's going to be an incredible event. So if any of you guys listening can pop on over to Houston, or if you're in Houston, definitely go check this out and I'll put the link to the event in the show notes as well. So thank you for your time, Becca. Is there anything else you want to share before we go? I don't think so. Just thank you so much for having me. I absolutely love connecting with you and having these conversations. So thank you so yes, much. Yes, the me. best. It is my pleasure. And I'm sure we'll connect again soon. Oh, absolutely. All right. Chat with you soon. Bye. Bye.